The second generation of 3D vCache CPUs is coming in hot. And with it the question, what is different compared to last gen? Is it the same design as Zen 3D or did AMD implement changes? During the research for this video, I stumbled across a couple of what I would call quirks and features. And one major problem for the 3D vCache technology with no near-term solution in sight. But enough teasing, let's take a closer look at Zen 4 X3D. I always like to start my analysis by giving the rumor mill a quick rundown. Because this time it looks like it will be more missed than hit. Let's tackle the three most repeated rumors about Zen 4 X3D. Rumor number one was the addition of more CPUs to the X3D lineup. Since we are getting three X3D label CPUs instead of only one like last time, this rumor turned out to be true. To be honest, it was to be expected, still one point for the rumor mill. Rumor number two was that Zen 4 X3D is supposed to have very little or no clock speed regression at all, and this one is a complete miss. The main drawback of Zen 3D is the reduction in clock speed. If we compare the 5800X to the 5800X3D, the X3D comes with a 4% reduction in boost and a 11% reduction in base clock. It's nothing too serious and in games the X3D is still far ahead, but in pure multi-thread applications, the 5800X can be faster. If we now compare the 7700X to the 7800X3D, we can see that the hopes of less clock speed reduction were unfounded. The boost clock is reduced by 7% and AMD hasn't even announced the final base clock for the X3D yet, which means they are still in the process of testing and binning the chips to determine the proper clock speeds. Not a good sign in my opinion. I guess it will land somewhere around 4.1 GHz, which would be a 10 to 11% reduction similar to the 5800X3D. But even if the base clock will be higher, the simple fact that the boost clock got a larger reduction than Zen 3D shows that the rumor mill was wrong with this prediction. Rumor number 3 predicted that Zen 4 X3D will offer an even larger speed up than Zen 3D, but it's still a bit too early for a final verdict. The question if Zen 4 could benefit more from the addition of 3D vCache than Zen 3 is really interesting since there are two opposing arguments we made here. The argument against a larger benefit for Zen 4 is pretty easy to explain. The reason 3D vCache increases gaming performance is because games are very latency dependent and with a much larger L3 cache X3D CPUs can store more data close to the CPU cores, greatly reducing how often the CPU has to access the much slower system memory. Games that can already fit all of the data inside the L3 cache of the base models don't benefit from the larger cache. That's when you don't see higher performance on X3D models. But AMD implemented two major changes in Zen 4 which could reduce the advantages of X3D. First, while Zen 4 has the same 32 MB of the L3 cache as Zen 3, the L2 cache has been doubled from 0.5 to a full MB per CPU core. A 5800X has 8 cores with 0.5 MB each, resulting in a total of 4 MB L2 cache. A 7700X also has 8 cores, but with 1 MB each and thus a total of 8 MB L2 cache, which increases the combined cache of Zen 4 to 40 MB. Now even more games will be able to fit all their important data inside the cache of the non-X3D models. And second, Zen 4 uses faster DDR5 memory, which allows for more bandwidth and lower latency. If you are running Zen 4 with tuned DDR5-6000 memory, even if the cache is full and the game has to access the system memory, the penalty won't be as severe as with Zen 3 and slower DDR4 memory. So the argument against a bigger performance uplift for Zen 4 X3D is the increased L3 cache size and faster DDR5 memory. But you can also make a opposing argument. Zen 4 delivers about 13% more IPC compared to Zen 3 and greatly increases clock speed at the same time, resulting in much higher throughput. And if you have faster CPU cores, they need to be fed more data. You could argue that Zen 4 will benefit even more from the larger L3 cache because of the faster CPU core architecture. I really like it when you can make good arguments for both sides. Let me know in the comments down below if you think Zen 4 will benefit more from 3db cache than Zen 3. I'm interested in your thoughts. Now that we are done with the rumor mill, let's take a look at the actual design of Zen 4 X3D because that's where we can find the biggest surprises and discover a hard to solve problem for AMD's 3db cache technology. This time there are two different layouts, a single CCD for the 7800X3D and a dual CCD for both 7900 and 7950X3D. The 7800X3D is exactly what we expected, simply adding 64 MB of 3db cache on top of the 8-core 16-thread CPU while lowering clock speeds to keep thermals in check. 
AMD is again using so-called TSVs, which are basically copper wires that go through the base CPU chiplet and extend into the stacked cache chiplet. The cache chiplet is only made out of cache cells and doesn't have any control logic. Everything is handled by the base CPU die. The cache chiplet also only covers the area of the CPU chiplet that is used for cache. It isn't stacked above the more power-hungry CPU cores. Still, to retain structural integrity, two silicon dies without any transistors are placed above the CPU area to fill what otherwise would be a gap so heat can still rise to the top. But there's one major difference that isn't obvious at first glance. It's not part of the silicon design itself, but visible in the hardware specifications. To better explain this interesting change, let's quickly take another look at the previous Zen 3D generation. Back at the 5800X versus X3D comparison, I now added the thermal design power and maximum thermal junction temperature for both CPUs. And as you can see, they are exactly the same. TDP is for heat generated from power consumption and TJ Max is the maximum safe temperature the CPU is supposed to run at for prolonged periods of time. Both CPUs having the same values seems logical at first, but then you realize that every review showed the X3D consuming way less power. So why are both CPUs classified with the same TDP? It has to do with the TJ Max value and no, I don't mean the closing store chain. Let me explain. Most of us think of TDP as a power consumption metric, but in reality it's a thermal value. It doesn't tell us that a CPU is using 105 watts of energy, but that we need to cool 105 watts of thermal output. The 3 dv cache chiplet does consume a little bit of extra power, still this is more than offset by the reduction in clock speed. The X3D does consume less power than the base model. So again the question, why the same TDP? Because the 3 dv cache chiplet, and as you learned before, two extra structural silicon slices sit on top of the bottom die and reduce heat transfer. It's like an additional barrier for the heat on its way to the heat spreader. To put it simple, the 5800X3D consumes less power but is harder to cool. That's why both CPUs have the same TDP, because you need similar cooling performance to keep the temperatures at or below TJ Max, not because they consume the same amount of energy. This problem seems to have increased with Zen 4 X3D. Back at the 7700X vs 7800X3D comparison, we can see that TDP and TJ Max values are different this time. The X3D, while again running at lower clock speeds, now has an even higher TDP and at the same time the TJ Max value has been dropped to 89 degrees. That means the X3D is not safe to run at 95 degrees for prolonged periods of time which must be due to the addition of 3 dv cache. With Zen 4 X3D, we can observe the same problem which already affected Zen 3D, only supercharged. Zen 4 is a more energy dense design, producing more heat per millimeter squared. Putting 3 dv cache on top of the CPU creates an even bigger challenge for heat removal. And as a result, AMD had to increase the TDP for the 7800X3D even above that of the 7700X. Not because it is using more power, but because you need much better cooling to keep the CPU temperature in check. The 7800X3D isn't the only 3D recache enabled CPU this time. AMD is blessing us with two more X3D CPUs, the 7900X3D and the 7950X3D. These CPUs have a unique asymmetrical design, where only one of the two CTDs actually utilizes 3D recache technology. The other one has a default amount of L3 cache. I have to be honest, I did not expect this at all and was surprised at first, but after thinking about it, AMD's design choice does make sense. Interestingly, the dual CCD CPUs fare much better than the single CCD variant when it comes to clock speeds. 7900 and 7950X3D get the same boost clock as their non-X3D brothers and only a 6-7% reduction in base clock. But how is that possible? Didn't we just learn that the 7800X3D is even more clock speed constrained than Zen 3D? The simple answer is that thermal problems are just easier to hide on CPUs with two CCDs. Ryzen CPUs with two CPU chiplets are easier to cool in general, since the heat output is spread across the larger area of two CPU dies. TDP values for each individual CCD are lower, and the dual CCD CPUs actually get a decrease in TDP, down to the same 120 watts. In addition, only one of the two CCDs actually has stacked 3D cache. High boost clocks are very likely only running on the CCD without 3DV cache, which means that the CCD with 3DV cache the run at lower clock speeds. By giving us a single boost clock number, AMD makes it look like the 3 dv cache parts are running at higher frequencies, when in fact this is most likely not the case. The overall reduced TJ Max value further validates this point. AMD hasn't magically solved the problems introduced with 3D stack cache on CPUs with two CCDs, 
You still need to run lower clock speeds, increase cooling and decrease the maximum temperature. The asymmetrical design introduces other challenges too, because AMD sort of created a hybrid big little architecture. Each CCD has different hardware properties and does different strengths and weaknesses. The X3D chiplet is obviously much faster in cache limited applications like games, but the non-X3D chiplet runs at higher clock speeds and can be faster in other areas. Ryzen CPUs already have to work around their chiplet design, because switching from one CPU chiplet to the other introduces a lot of extra latency. But this time it's even more important to keep the right threads on the right chiplets, because failing to do so could cost even more performance. Imagine the main thread of a game being pulled from the X3D chiplet onto the other one. Performance could crash by over 50%, depending on how much the game benefits from the larger cache. We already have situations where single CCD Ryzen CPUs perform better than their more expensive brothers, and the asymmetrical layout could increase these problems. AMD needs to absolutely make sure that thread scheduling works flawless on the 7900 and 7950 X3D. Otherwise, patchy performance will scare off customers. I think this is also one of the reasons there is only a single X3D chiplet on these CPUs, because applications that benefit from 3D vCache don't want to be spread across two different chiplets. It would defeat the entire idea of having everything run within a single low latency chip. I've heard that AMD is considering using a whitelist approach, which basically makes sure that certain applications are only running on one specific CCD, but we will have to wait for launch reviews to get a better understanding of AMD's solution or lack thereof. On a positive note, AMD was able to collect a lot of experience with chiplet scheduling and Intel's hybrid design introduced with Auto Lake led to a much more aware Windows scheduler. I think AMD can figure it out, but the work needs to be put in. Another question is which process node the 3D vCache chiplets are manufactured in. Zen 3D used the same TSMC N7 node for both CPU and cache time. There are two options for Zen 4 X3D. First, the 3D vCache chiplet could be produced using TSMC's N5 node, the same as the CPU itself, or second, it could use an older N7 or N6 process node. There are good arguments for both options. So far, TSMC has only ever talked about N7 on N7 and N5 on N5 3D stacking, and compared to N7, N5 still is able to achieve a higher SRAM density. Unlike the switch from N5 to N3, it's not a complete useless shrink for cache cells. On the other hand, N5 SRAM scaling is only about 1.2x, and manufacturing 3D vCache chiplets in a N7 node would not only be cheaper, but also leave more N5 capacity for AMD to produce other, more important products. And AMD's using N6 on N5 stacking with their upcoming MI300 GPUs, so it has to be possible. We simply don't know yet, but I hope that we will find out once Zen 4 X3D has launched. Currently, my money is on a 5 nanometer cache chiplet, but I wouldn't be surprised if AMD is already taking advantage of using cheaper nodes. Leave a comment down below with your guess. I'm interested to see if there's a clear majority opinion on this topic. Looking at everything we know about Zen 4 X3D, I think it's obvious that the second generation of 3D vCache technology is just a slight evolution and not the revolution many hoped for. It took me a while to collect and connect all the pieces of information, like the increased TDP for the 7800 X3D, the asymmetrical design of the dual CCD chips, and reduced TJ Max values. But then I finally realized all this talk about AMD being able to fix the drawbacks of 3D vCache technology with the second generation was completely unfounded. Not only could AMD not fix the constraints of the technology, it got even worse. And if you think about it, there is no other possible way. AMD isn't fighting some hardware or design bug, it's simple physical limitations. If you put another layer of silicon on top of your CPU, heat transfer will be reduced. No matter what you do, you can shave down the height of each slice of silicon to improve heat transfer. You can place the chiplet in such a way that it only covers the cache cells and not the CPU cores. You can run the CPU cores at lower clock speeds to reduce heat generation. But in the end, you have active silicon on top of active silicon, which is a nightmare for thermals. AMD can't defeat physics. 3D stack chips need to run at lower clock speeds to enable proper cooling. Nothing in the near term will fix that. I know all of this sounds super negative right now, when in fact Zen 4 X3D looks like an amazing product. Just because there are trade-offs doesn't mean it's not worth it. We already had the same story with Zen 3D. Yes, it has to run at lower clock speeds. Yes, overclocking is restricted. Yes, it still runs hot and yes, it does cost a lot more to produce. But at the same time, the increase in gaming performance is amazing and so is the energy efficiency. It's definitely a worthwhile trade-off. 
you just have to adapt to the limitations of 3D stack designs. Zen 3D was amazing and Zen 4X 3D will be on another level. Zen 4 already adds 13% more IPC and runs at much higher clock speeds, even on the downclocked X3D variants. The performance potential is so much higher. And not only that, Zen 4 is also a much more efficient architecture, at least if you run it close to its sweet spot. It might consume more power overall, but the increase in performance is even higher. Zen 4 X3D improves all the areas Zen 4 already excels at and turns them to 11. The 3 dv cache is a straight up magic potion for gaming IPC. The thermal constraints force clock speeds even closer to the sweet spot of the architecture. And with the 7900 and 7950 X3D, we get the best of both worlds. Super fast gaming performance with high frequency cores on the side. We will see more and more 3D stack chips in the future and they will all fight the same common enemy pushing the boundaries of physics. It will get even more difficult as chips ring further down and energy density increases. Zen 5 X3D won't magically solve all the thermal problems. Most likely it will be even worse, but that's okay as long as the trade-off has more advantages than disadvantages. And that will always be the case with 3D Vcache. And who knows, maybe at some point in the future, improvements in material science, packaging technology, power routing or whatever will fix the issues 3D Vcache currently has to fight with. Until then, I'll be looking forward to every single new iteration. I hope you enjoyed this video as much as I did. If you did, you know what to do and see you in the next one.